we provide something with, with heat energy, there are two possibilities. One possibility is that the temperature of the object that we are providing heat energy increases. And the other possibility is that is that nothing happens. The temperature stays same. So let's see. If temperature increases, the concept of thermal capacity is involved. What is specific thermal capacity? Thermal. Okay, let's uh, first do thermal capacity, then we will do therm specific thermal capacity. Thermal capacity. Amount of heat required Again, temperature or again, unit rise in temperature rise in temperature is called. Heat capacity. Heat capacity, thermal capacity. These two words go for one another. Thermal capacity to heat energy divided by change in temperature. So, heat capacity equals to heat energy divided by change in temperature. Units. Energy is always measured in joules. Change in temperature is in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Specific heat capacity will be in Joule per Kelvin or Joule per degree Celsius. Now that is thermal capacity. Specific. I can't hear you, sir. Same, sir. Sorry? Whenever word specific comes in, it means it is specified for a certain uh, value or, or there must be some condition. The condition in this case is uh, it is for a unit mass. Specific capacity is Amount of heat energy required by unit mass of a substance to gain unit rise in 
temperature is called specific thermal capacity. Now, specific thermal capacity equals to heat energy divided by mass and change in temperature. So it will be small c equals to heat energy divided by mass into change of temperature. So when we are converting joule per kilogram to uh, joule per kilogram per degree Celsius to joule per gram per degree Celsius and vice versa, we need to know this thing. And, and these are the very common units that we use. And examiner keeps mixing these things with one another. So you can encounter any one of them. Uh, a note, note is that when we are uh, doing specific heat capacity, because we use change in temperature, it doesn't matter whether we use the temperature in Kelvin or temperature in degree Celsius, the, the readings will be same. Here is the reason. In specific heat capacity, we use uh, same value, we use change in temperature which will have same value in Kelvin and in degree Celsius. So whenever we use change of temperature in a formula, it doesn't matter whether the temperature is in Kelvin or in degree Celsius, okay? It is completely okay to use any temperature. Okay, did we discuss how to convert Kelvin to degree Celsius? Okay, we will find time to, to do that. If temperature stays same, what happens then? If temperature stays same, it means change of state is taking place. It is change of state which is happening over here. How many states are commonly found for matter? Okay. So these are solid, liquid, and gas.
Just one second. Okay, we might convert a solid into liquid or a liquid into gas or a solid into gas or gas into solid. All, all are possible in one way or another. So all these processes have names. This one's okay. Now, how many processes are there? The conversion of solid to liquid, this will be called melting. Liquid converting into gas is boiling. Evaporation is an example, but we won't discuss it over here. The reason is uh, evaporation is not happening at a constant temperature. It is not a process that happens on a fixed temperature, unlike boiling. But it is a process in which liquid converts into gas, so it was important to mention to here. And, and if solid converts into gas directly, this process is called sublimation. Gas converting into liquid, this is called condensation. And, and liquid converting into solid, this is called freezing. And gas converting to solid, um, desublimation or solidification. So these are the changes of state that can happen. Let and eat. Amount of heat required to change state without changing temperature is called latent heat. How many different latent heats are there? Latent heat has two types, the specific latent heat of fusion. If the word specific comes in, it means we are talking about a unit map. Amount of heat, energy required to 
convert unit mass of a solid to liquid at a constant temperature is called It's called a specific latent heat of fusion. Uh, the formula for this one is latent heat of fusion, LF equals to heat energy divided by mass that is converted. In this case, energy is in joules. Mass is in the standard unit is kg, let's say, but it can also be grams. So latent heat of fusion will be joules per kg or joules per gram. Now, specific latent heat of vaporization. Now, what is specific latent heat of vaporization? Amount of heat energy required to convert unit mass of liquid to gas at a constant temperature is called specific latent heat of vaporization. The formula is same. There's no difference for the formulas. They both have same formula. Okay. So, That's it. Now, we will be solving some past paper questions tomorrow for, for this topic of heat, but today we will be finishing another thing, which is called uh, gas in a container. Okay, uh, simplest example of a gas in a container can be a balloon. So everybody knows what balloon is. Inflated balloon. There is air inside. And I hope you can see that the shape of the balloon is because of the air inside. If you remove the air from the uh, from the balloon, it will not be a sphere like a ball-like thing. It will just become ish. 
a, a, a bag without anything. But when we fill it with air, it becomes bigger, it, it gains a shape. And, and we know that that is not the shape of the rubber. Rubber is, is not in that shape. It is The shape is because of the air inside, which is pushing on the walls inside. And, and in this balloon, we can clearly see that the air inside is exerting pressure from the inside of the balloon. Question is, Why air inside the balloon exert pressure on the walls of the Balloon. It is a very common question. Examiner does not like he he does not ask for balloon. Actually, his question is that um, why gas molecules exert pressure on the wall of the container. But I, I have uh, made a very specific condition for you. In, instead of container, I have this balloon. It is a rubber balloon, and instead of any gas, it is air. Can you note down this question and, and take it as a homework and, and prepare your answer and send it to me to check? Can you take a screenshot? Yes, sir. Done? Okay. So one second.